This is Democracy Watch. Mark, we have all seen the Rachel Maddow clip. I've gotten hundreds of emails about it. For those who haven't yet seen what I'm talking about, here's a quick uh, clip of that. At Rolling Stone today, they profile 70 different election officials who have been put into position in the swing states of Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, who are election denialists, committed election denialists. Officials that have been put in place in all of those swing states to make sure that election results, no matter what they are, do not get certified in those states this year. Quote, at least 22 of these election officials have already refused or delayed certification processes in recent elections. According to Democratic election lawyer Mark Elias, quote, I think we are going to see mass refusals to certify the election in November. Quote, Republicans are counting on not just that they can disrupt the election in big counties, they're counting on the fact that if they don't certify in several small counties, you can't certify statewide results. So, okay, there is a lot of concern right now, as we just saw, that Donald Trump won't even need votes because he's already got election officials in swing states who will simply refuse to certify the election results. So first off, so as not to bury the lead here, how realistic is this and what can be done about it? So we have been talking about this as part of this series now for more than a year. And it is because this is very serious. This is something that everyone who cares about free and fair elections cares about ensuring that we have the uh, the the you know the process in the post election move smoothly and orderly should be worried about. Like we saw this in 2020. The fact is that Donald Trump in 2020 tried to disrupt the peaceful transfer of power through litigation ultimately through January 6th. But in between that, he tried to get in the state of Michigan, the Wayne County uh, Board uh, uh, Republicans to refuse to certify the res election results, and then tried to get the Republicans on the statewide board to refuse to certify the election results. So this is something we ought to be very, very worried about. We saw it again in 2022 in places, and I expect we will see it again in 2024. And what as to what we can all do about it, look, my legal team is in court as we speak, trying to protect against this, but there is something for everyone to do. You know, you and I have been speaking out about it, and I wish more members of the media would be speaking out. Kudos to, to Rachel Maddow, but really kudos, frankly, to you, Brian, because you have been talking about this much longer. Um, but we also need uh, everyday Americans to be focused on this and to be paying attention and to be calling this out in their communities. So because of their structure or who the officials in charge are, what specific states, for example, are especially worrisome for you? Like, like Michigan has a Democratic trifecta, so is it safe to assume that there's less risk than a place like Nevada, which now has a Republican governor? I wish I could say that, you know, that I that we don't have to worry about states like Michigan. But the fact is that the, the certification process, just to back up, starts at the uh, at the municipal or county level, depending on the state. And these are oftentimes bipartisan boards, right? The idea historically has been that this is part of the celebration of democracy, part of the pageantry of democracy, as I've called it, um, where after the elections results are, are you know, after people have voted and the unofficial election results have been called in by the polling places, that on a bipartisan basis, um, uh, Democrats and Republicans sit down and agree that the numbers add up to what they add up to. Uh, they are then uh, put on a form, uh, and uh, both Democrats and Republicans sign off on those. Those are then sent to the counties, counties to the state, ultimately the state to the governor. Governor signs a big certificate on a big calligraphy that goes to the uh, to Congress and the National Archives in the case of presidential elections. And it was those certificates on January 6th that were threatened by the insurrectionists, right? That's what they were trying to prevent. But but before you get to the governor signing this, you have a whole bunch of these sort of celebrations of democracy at the local and statewide level. And those are oftentimes bipartisan, as I mentioned, bipartisan boards. So in Arizona, we saw Cochise County, Arizona, refusing uh, to certify to try to prevent the, the state of Arizona certifying the election results in 2022. So it's, it's a lot of states. It's Michigan, it's Wisconsin, it's Arizona, it's Georgia. In Georgia, the Republicans are actually trying to pass a rule to make it more discretion for uh, for election deniers to not certify elections. So it's in every one of our communities we need to pay attention to this. Well, are there any legal ramifications for people who corruptly refuse to certify or who refuse to actually do their jobs by virtue of not certifying when their job is to certify? 
Absolutely. So in Arizona, I mentioned in Cochise County after 2022, when the that county's Republicans were refusing to certify my my law firm, we brought a lawsuit, we sued, we won. Um, and uh, and then after that, there were actually indictments of the Cochise County officials by the state of Arizona because they are, as you point out, in violation of the state law. You know, they are in violation of their obligation. And they and, and the ultimate, you know, we talk, we, we throw around terms like election denialism or election subversion. Uh, election interference. What is more subversive than refusing to allow the election results to be certified? What is more? Uh, what is more denial uh, than 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 that? And and what is more interfering with the outcome of elections than um, trying to block? the peaceful transfer of power or the peaceful um, uh, election certification process. So these are very, very serious. They they are crimes in many places, and they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Well, you just mentioned that your firm is doing exactly that. So I know a lot of us out here are wondering what can be done. Mark and his team are on the front lines doing it right now. So for those who want to support him and his team and the invaluable work that they do, a tiny step that we can all take is just to sign up for Democracy Docket. It's the free news outlet he founded to focus on everything voting in elections. That is his way to get good, accurate information out to the rest of us. It's also a tiny step. It's free, and it's a great way to support him for all the work that he and his firm are doing uh, in this in this you know incredibly important arena. So I'll put the link right here on the screen and also in the post description of this video. If you're not yet signed up, please do a favor and sign up. Mark, to what extent can the refusal to certify one small county, for example, prevent the state certification from actually moving forward? Yeah, of course, that's the big worry, right? So in 2020, Donald Trump and Ronna McDaniels found themselves on the phone with the Wayne County Republican Canvas Board members. I mean, yeah. just think about how breathtaking that is, that you are like on this local board. Now, Wayne County is a big county, right? It's Detroit, but you are on this board and the president of the United States is calling you, along with yeah. the chair of the RNC, telling you, oh, don't worry, don't do it, we'll get you lawyers. Remember that? Remember that piece of it, Brian? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But in 2022, we saw them sort of move to an even more extreme position in that you had these rural red counties like a Cochise County, Arizona. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I, I, I'm i very fond of Cochise County. I think good people live there. Uh, it's a it's a great place to live, but it, you know, it's not Maricopa, right? It's not the large, it's not a large county, but you started to see these smaller counties um, think that they could hold up the entire state by refusing to certify. So, so you know, I worry a lot that we that it is not just the large counties, but it will be these small counties. And if you're a secretary of state, if you're the secretary of state of Michigan or of Wisconsin or Nevada or Pennsylvania uh, or Georgia, um, what do you do if you don't have all the results? You know, like you can say, well, it didn't really affect the outcome, but but that's not right. Right. Like in, in the end, you need all of the counties in your state uh, to participate. And it is just an absolute crime. I mean, I mean that literally and figuratively that 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 Republicans are spreading this hate and these lies in ways that undermine what is ultimately the thing that that makes this country great, which is free and fair elections and 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 the coming together after the elections behind the winners. So I just want to drill into this for a moment because I, I really want to understand what we should expect to be done. Is it just that, first of all, in different states, there are different rules. So we're going to see scattershot decisions regardless, and that ultimately all of these are going to be left up to basically litigation in each state's respective courts or or the way that each state has to litigate these issues as it relates to the Supreme Court and certification with the governor and all that. Is this just scattershot rulings depending on the jurisdiction? So we hope that going into elections, that election officials will realize that their paramount obligation is to the people of their state, to the law, and to the Constitution. But we can't be sure that that's going to be the case. And increasingly, Donald Trump is making clear he doesn't want that to be the case. I mean, think about what Donald Trump has said about um, get out the vote. He has said, don't worry about getting out the vote. Just worry about uh, election denial. 
He has said we're not going to have to worry about elections at all in four years. So we have to be clear eyed that despite the ho best hope we have that people will do the right thing, that people won't do the right thing. And then, yes, Brian, it is left to the court system in a somewhat scattershot fashion. Maybe there is a way to consolidate across counties in a particular state, but it is going to have to be fought county by county, state by state to force accurate certification of elections. And that is a tragedy for our democracy that we that it may come to that again in 2024. It came to that in 2022, uh, and we all need to be ready. Mark, for posterity here, is certifying elections in any way optional? And what is your message to these county election officials, you know, uh, uh, who do refuse to cer certify election results? If you are a Republican county uh, official, do your job. If you're not prepared to do your job, to administer fair elections, to certify accurate results, now is the time to resign. Get out of office. Don't be sitting in the chair you're sitting in. You're just, you're, you're not cut out for the job that you have been given. If you cannot celebrate democracy and the outcome of free and fair elections, regardless of whether the candidate you support won or lost, you're in the wrong business. Leave the election business and go do something else. But if you stay in this job, if you choose to be in a position to administer elections and to certify the election results, and you don't do your job, you're going to get sued, and you're going to lose. And you are going to go down in history as one of the villains in American history. Yeah. And that is true for the county election officials. It is true for the state election officials. And by the way, it is true for those Republican members of Congress listening. If you can't accept the outcome of free and fair elections, shame on you. Go find another line of work. Mark. The cynical read of this is that those people view themselves as being there as a bulwark to the, to what they believe uh, is is rampant corruption on the Democrat side because they've been fed a lot of disinformation by the folks on the right, like Steve Bannon, who exist to 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 spread this kind of disinformation. And so they view themselves as part of an operation to push back against what they see as fraud on the left. And so and so. What, what do you say to those people, for example, who who are there as part of like a broader push enabled by by the Steve Bannons of the world to write what they might think is a wrong? So I have a certain measure of sympathy for the rank and file Republicans who have been lied to by Donald Trump and their party now for eight plus years. OK, I feel badly that you have been lied to. I feel terrible that you have come to believe something that is simply not true. You have come to believe that that voting is not secure in this country. You have come to believe that the 2020 election results were not accurate. And, you know, to those people, you have my sympathies to a point. I mean, at some point, you have to have personal responsibility and learn the truth. But yeah. for the election officials, for the people who are in position of responsibility, for the Republican electeds, for the members of the media, whether they be Steve Bannon or Fox News, shame on you. Shame on you, because you are spreading the lie. You are perpetuating the big lie. You know that what Donald Trump is saying is wrong. You know that he lost in 2020. And you are responsible for defending the worst in this country, which is the undermining of free and fair elections the justification of an insurrection on January 6th. And for you, I have nothing but words of contempt. Stop it. Stop the lies. We need to have free and fair elections. And the work you are doing for Donald Trump in spreading his malicious, malignant, narcissistic bile, there is nothing but, but, but contempt for you. Let's finish off with this. And, and I asked this question as the result of, again, the raft of emails that I received, probably more emails on this topic than I'd ever gotten on any other topic. Um, and to your earlier point, we have been beating this drum, but I think, you know, in, in the aftermath of Rachel Maddow covering this on her show, it's really coming into the zeitgeist in a way that it hasn't before. But what do you say to people who are rightfully scared about what they view as, as what, fe what may feel like a foregone conclusion in that People will cast their ballots and we will just wait for the inevitability that is watching these election denialist uh, 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 election workers refuse to certify because they're not happy with the outcome. 
Absolutely not. Don't give up. I mean, don't give up hope and don't give up your plan to vote. I mean, the most important thing you can do is make sure you are registered, make sure your friends and family are registered, and that you vote. You have a plan to vote and that you vote. And you have confidence that your vote will count it. I can tell you that from my, my standpoint, I have, I have uh, dedicated my career to protecting your right to vote. And I do it every day in court with my team. We do it on this on this series in speaking out. In 2020, I was proud to represent President Biden and the DNC in defeating these efforts. In 2022, I was proud to be uh, fighting these efforts in states like Arizona and Pennsylvania, and we won. And Republicans hate me because I fight so hard, but we but when we fight, we win. And I promise you, whether it is whether you are in Arizona or in Pennsylvania, whether you're in Wisconsin or in Georgia or Nevada or in Minnesota or New York or Florida, there are lawyers who are out there fighting for your rights. And whether it is me and my team or it is the many other great lawyers uh, as part of this effort, we will fight for you to make sure that we have accurate election results. We will fight for free and fair elections and Republicans will lose. Well, I know I speak for the entire audience in, in, in expressing how grateful we all are for you and your team. So again, for those watching right now to support the work that Mark and his team are doing right now, please make sure to sign up for Democracy Docket. I'll put the link right here on the screen and also in the post description of this video. I'm Brian Teller Cohen. I'm Mark Elias. This is Democracy Watch. Thank you.